Okay, so I've been watching this one with great interest. Washington Post congressional correspondent Sung Min Kim. Now, she was trending on Twitter amongst liberals for what? What was her crime that they were saying that she's a terrible gotcha journalist? Well, she went up to Senator Lisa Murkowski and she said, hey, have you seen this tweet that Neera Tandon sent about you? And Lisa Murkowski was like, no, I haven't seen it. What is it? Sung shows her the tweet on her phone doing her job as a journalist. As they point out, they had to show Trump tweets to senators all the time in Mm -hmm. order to get their reaction. Mm -hmm. Standard operating procedure amongst actual reporters. Well, resistance liberals on Twitter who cheered whenever Sung and her colleagues showed Trump tweets to Republican senators to try and get their reaction freaked out, being like, this is disgusting. She's inciting and basically campaigning against Neera's nomination. Mm -hmm. So first of all, (laughs) Going to bat for Neera Tandon, pathetic, number one. Number two, (laughs) attacking a journalist for doing her job is 10x more pathetic. And I'm not making a mountain out of Mohill. Washington Post's top editor had to put out a statement defending Sung. Like, Washington Post subscribers were like, we're going to cancel our subscriptions Uh because your journalists are playing gotcha journalism targeting Neera Tandon and campaigning against her. In terms of this, the worst of the offender was this guy, Eric Bollert, who I barely knew who he was. Some, like, resistance liberal guy. And he recorded this whole thing, which Sung eventually struck back at. But let's take a listen to how he characterize this incident. The incident that sparked Dowd's tisk tisking column came last week when Washington Post reporter Seung Min Kim was reporting on Neera Tandon's nomination to be director of the Office of Management and Budget and the pushback she's receiving from senators regarding her mean tweets from the past. Kim took time to pull up a four-year-old tweet Tandon had posted about Senator Lisa Murkowski to show the Republican. A picture of the incident traveled around Twitter, and lots of progressives wonder if that was the proper role for a reporter doing a confirmation hearing. Bellway journalists insisted they had showed GOP senators lots of Trump tweets over the previous four years in order to get reaction. But of course, those were real-time tweets, not reporters digging up missives from years ago in order to get a response from a senator from the opposition party. This is completely ridiculous, Crystal, this entire situation. I feel dumber of having to lay it out Uh. for everybody. But it's like I said, it's important. Whenever something has to prompt a response from the top editor of the Washington Post, you know that it was serious enough that they felt they had to defend one of their journalists for doing the very basics of her job. That's the most disgusting part. Yeah, absolutely. And she hit back at that, and uh, we can put that response up on there. She says, look, this is not accurate. (laughs) I didn't take time to track down a four-year-old tweet. It had been reported by other news outlets earlier that day, so many reporters and aides were aware of this tweet. I think it's the one that said that Murkowski was high on her yeah, own supply. It was. Yeah, it was funny. Something it was like a funny tweet. <laughs> hey, I want to know what, what Lisa Murkowski has to say about that. Absolutely. Thank you, Sung. Thank you for asking yes. her. And here's the thing. Yeah. is like, okay, when... Sung and other colleagues were pulling up the tweets of Donald Trump to get Republican reaction. Those were the tweets that were in the news that were relevant to that day's events and coverage. This was a tweet that was in the news that's relevant to whether Neera Tandon gets confirmed. I mean, that those aren't actually the issues that I wish were being predominantly debated in Neera Tandon's confirmation hearing. But the reality is, those are the things that Republican senators have been asking the most questions exactly. about. And Bernie Sanders, by the way, bringing up some of her mean tweets in the past about him. So it was a very highly relevant question to what is being debated in the United States Senate right now today. It's ridiculous that I even have to defend this because it's so basic and it's so equivalent to what they've done throughout the entirety of the Trump administration. So that's number one. Number two is, I love that liberals are more outraged about this than about (laughs) that Neera Tandon, you know, whitewashed for Michael Bloomberg, that she punched Faz Shakir because he asked a question of Hillary Clinton, that she outed a sexual harassment victim, retaliated against the people who had brought the claims forward. like Union bus. Union bus. I love and floated stealing Libyan oil. I love that this is the thing that they decide to get outraged about. And I also love the instinct to go to bat for Neera mm-hmm. Tannen and all. Oh, what are you doing? She's just like this Clinton world apparatchik operative. That's who you're going to bat for here. So it's a completely, the whole thing all the way around is just so bizarre to yeah, me. Yeah, but I will say this. 
and some, I don't, I'm not about Sung, I'm talking about her bosses and many other people. They made their money and they built their brands on opposition to Trump. This is what you get when your entire upper middle class white subscriber base is there only to see you report critically on Trump and not on the powerful. This is what happens. Didn't they, they just admit their, that too? Yeah, they did. Marty Baron, the head, the for, outgoing head of the Washington Post, just admitted we probably would not have hit our subscription targets if Trump wasn't president. So this is the deal you made with the devil. You can no longer report critically on a Democrat. You cannot even do these types of things, especially a near attendant like Democrat who has been convinced, you know, these wine moms that she's some like Indian American hero <laughs> who deserves, you know, deserves like a statue next to Gandhi um, in our government, <laughs> apparently, thanks to her contributions to the community. That's how they're starting to go after Sung. And this is the deal that they made. And, you know, in well, one I'm way. Well, I'm really off- offended yeah. the harsh. Uh, uh, harsh criticism that a woman of color like uh, Sung see, is coming in We can all play for this game. Yeah, right. This, to They're me, two it strikes as anti-Asian bias, yeah. and I don't think we should stand for it here. See? Yeah, we can all play this game. Thanks, guys. Tomorrow on Rising, Ryan Grimm will be here filling in for me, but we still have a phenomenal show planned for you all. New York Assemblyman Ron Kim, he's going to be back to talk about the latest with regards to Andrew Cuomo and what his fate as governor of New York may be. That's right. And Michael Starr Hopkins and Marshall Kossoff, they're going to be a team rising, plus host of the Bad Faith Podcast. Brianna Joy Gray. She's going to return. Remember to hit the subscribe button. Don't miss any of our videos. Don't forget to like and share as well. And we will see you all tomorrow. Have a great one, guys.